Okay, so today's exciting video is all about inflow roll. It's uh, slightly connected to the previous video, uh, Flapping to Equality. So if you haven't watched that one yet, uh, then watch it straight afterwards. And then uh, the end of this one will make more sense. Um, but it's very important because if you transition to forward flight in any helicopter, you're going to experience inflow roll and you'll need to put a control action in uh, to, to uh, reduce the effects of it or prevent it happening. And so if you understand this, then you can be more proactive, generally speaking, as a pilot. We're assuming in this particular instance then to start with that we are in a stable hover, no external airflow at all, just the rotor blades um, uh, spinning around and so therefore we're going to get an equal induced flow and relative airflow uh, and the same pitch in both of the uh, examples here of the vector diagrams. So there's your start state. If you can draw all that then everything else will flow a little bit quicker. Okay, So when we go from the hover uh, into forward flight we're going to need to put forward cyclic in. That's going to make adjustments to the pitch all around the disc, and that therefore is going to make the disc tilt forwards and will start to go forwards. So we're imagining in this case that the aircraft is moving in this direction, just like this one here. And therefore that's going to create a relative airflow or an additional relative airflow coming from this direction. So the first thing we have to remember, thinking back to the translational lift uh, video, is that before we start moving, we've got a large column of air that's moving down through the disc. And that is our induced flow. So at this point here, it's moving down at right angles to the disc, and it's basically being drawn down th through the actual disc. So as soon as we start moving though, we're going to start creating this relative airflow coming towards the disc. And it's the way that that horizontal income of flow is interacting with the uh, current induced flow down through the disc that gives us our inflow roll. So the best way of looking at this is seeing the oncoming airflow generated by forward flight in a battle with the induced flow that's being dragged down through the disc. The horizontal airflow just wants to continue over the top of the disc and do as best as possible to shift or blow that induced flow away. Uh, meanwhile, the induced flow is going to be constantly trying to drag that horizontal airflow down through the disc. So how does that manifest itself? Well, at the front of the disc, as the horizontal airflow starts to run the gauntlet, uh, the induced flow doesn't have much of an effect over it, and it manages to effectively blow that induced flow away at the front of the disc. And as it moves further and further across the top of the disc, the induced flow gets more and more of an opportunity to have its effect on the horizontal airflow, and so starts to pull it more and more towards the vertical. So by the time we get to the halfway point, we're seeing some of the horizontal airflow being pulled into the disc. And by the rear of the disc, we're probably going to be looking at a large effect on the horizontal airflow from the induced flow. That will, therefore, mean that there'll be more of an induced flow towards the rear of the disc as you start to move forwards. But the front of the disc will essentially be in much cleaner air and therefore have a lower induced flow. So that is how the airflow is affected as it goes over the disc. So now we can have a look at how that affects the different parts of the, of the disc itself. So starting with the front blade, as we can see, the front of the disc is passing into nice clean air with nice horizontal airflow. And this induced flow is not managing to have that much of an effect of it in time to affect the tip of the, the front blade. What does that mean? Well, it means that the horizontal airflow is managing to blow some of this induced flow away and therefore reduce the induced flow towards the front of the disc. So we can see that at the front of the disc here we've got a increase in angle of attack. An increase in angle of attack is going to give us an increase in lift. So now let's look at the rear of the disc. 
So the rear blade then, we can see we're getting an addition to our already um, current induced flow going down through the disc. So if we're getting an addition to the induced flow, we've now got a reduction in the angle of attack due to the increase in induced flow. What does that do? It's going to reduce the lift towards the rear of the disc. So a lot of similarities between uh, the flapping to equality and the flat back. Okay, so we can see we've got uh, the further towards the front of the disc, uh, the higher the amount of lift you're going to get, and the further towards the rear, the dirtier the air is, is going to get, and therefore the less lift you're going to get. Okay, so if you've got a nice articulated blade as you come through that three o'clock point into that cleaner air, we start getting that increase in lift uh, due to the cleaner air, therefore the blade is going to start to move up. The further around towards the 12 o'clock point we get and the cleaner the air is, the more of a advantage we're going to get um, in terms of reduction in induced flow and therefore higher lift. The higher the magnitude of lift, the faster the blade is going to move upwards until we get to the 12 o'clock point where it's going to be rocketing upwards and then as we go through that 12 o'clock point we're not going to have the same amount of clean air, it's going to start to get a little bit more dirty and therefore we're not going to have the same benefits so we're still going to have more lift relative to the rear of the, the, of the um, disc so it's still going to keep going upwards however it's not going to go up at the same rate, it's going to slow its rate of climb until we get to our highest point so we can therefore annotate the two main points so it's going to be moving upwards at its fastest rate here and downwards at its fastest rate uh, on the opposite side of the blade and then therefore as we've just pointed out over this point we're going to reach our high point and conversely as the blade then starts to move through the nine o'clock position we're going to get progressively dirtier and dirtier air which is going to give us a higher induced flow and therefore a gradually reducing magnitude of lift which means it's going to start to flap down at the fastest rate towards the 12 o'clock before then continuing down until we get round to the three o'clock point where again we start to go up again. So it's two advantages we get from having that flapping hinge. The first one is the fact that it is allowed to flap so it can move independent of the actual mast of the aircraft but the other one is being able to flap means that as the blade comes forward and starts to move upwards we actually create an induced flow um, as the blade is slowly moving upwards it's creating a vertical component of airflow that comes down through the disc until we get to the 12 o'clock point where we're getting our highest amount of um, induced flow that we are creating by moving the blade upwards all the way around to here. So the effect of this new induced flow that's being created as a result of the blade flapping up is that it actually reduces the lift to a certain extent which works against the lift that's being created by the cleaner air. The blade will still continue to accelerate upwards because in reality the reduction lift created by this new induced flow is not as great as the increase in lift created by the cleaner air. So the blade will continue to flap up at its max rate at the 12 o'clock point and it will continue to flap up around to the nine o'clock point, however, just not at the same speed as it would originally. So we can also annotate the fact that it's at its lowest point here. So you can already see at this point uh, that we've got a high point on the left-hand side, on the port side, and then a low, low point on the starboard side. Um, you can relate this to any helicopter where you're gonna have the lowest point on the advancing side and the highest point on the retreating side. And so we can see at this point, if we do nothing with the controls, the aircraft is going to roll towards the right-hand side. In reality, you should be able to notice this happening or preempt it by entering a little bit of forward sight click, uh, sorry, left sight click in this case. So how does this relate in that case to flapping to a quality? So we've already talked about how the blade actually now flaps to a quality due to inflow roll, but it also relates to flat back. And that's where this little diagram comes in here. Okay, so the best place to start then is with inflow roll because it's on the page. 
So looking at where the blade is high and where it is low. So first of all, we can see it is high on this side, so these two quadrants here, and it's low on these two quadrants. Even though it's slowly rising on this part, it's still low on that point, causing that roll over to the other side. So we can put a plus here and a plus here to indicate that the blade is up in these two quadrants and we can put a negative in each of the starboard quadrants to indicate that it is uh, down on that side. Now if we assume clearly that the aircraft is moving in this direction. Now if we overlay flat back onto this particular diagram. So in flat back we know that uh, the blade is flapping upwards at the front due to the increased speed on the advancing side when we start to move the blade forward or the disc forward. What does that mean? So if we've got the blade, the disc at the front is flapped up and the disc at the back is flapped down, we can say we've got a positive towards this quadrant. We've also got positive towards the forward left quadrant. If we look to the rear though, in a flat back, when we move forwards, the rear of the disc is flapped down, so it's gone negative in both the rear quadrants. So we can see now we've actually got uh, a line of symmetry that we can draw. So you can see that we have a line of symmetry along this line, but not along this line. So along this line in the middle here is our important line. And the reason why is because we've got a lot of positives in this sector and not a lot of positives in this sector. So essentially we've got a higher amount of lifting force in this half than we do in this half. What does that mean? Well this half is going to go upwards, that half is going to go downwards and that pretty much reflects exactly what happens in forward flight because we're actually getting a lifting up from the, at the front from flat back and we're getting a lifting up on the retreating side from inflow roll which means that the whole disc ultimately wants to flap up and towards the advancing side. And so we can relate that to our actual cyclic inputs. So as we start to move the aircraft forwards, we need to push forwards on the cyclic more, and we also need to push slightly towards the retreating side to counter this lifting moment that we're getting from the sort of forward left. Okay, so what's gonna be the effect then of moving into forward flight? So starting with uh, flat back, as we start to move forward into forward flight, we're going to get an increase in speed on our advancing side. What's that going to do? That's going to increase that lift and therefore increase the amount of uh, positive lift forcing towards the front. So we're going to get more positives towards the front. So the, the disc is ultimately going to want to flap up even more towards the front. Okay, so what effect is that going to have on the inflow roll then? So as we move faster and faster forward, we're going to get more and more of um, a higher horizontal speed and the higher the horizontal speed, the less of an effect this induced flow is going to have on it. So we're going to get cleaner and cleaner air further and further towards the rear of the disc. If we've got cleaner and cleaner air, then all these negatives that we've created from the inflow roll are going to start to move more and more towards the rear and we're going to start to add positives in this point. So again, we're going to start to turn this line further and further. So in essence, as we start to transition into forward flight and go faster, this line of symmetry here is going to start to turn until we eventually get to a point where we have no effects of inflow roll because A, the induced flow has reduced so much that it doesn't have an effect on the horizontal component and B, the horizontal component is far too strong for any induced flow to have an effect. So that's pretty much all you need to cover. Uh, and again, uh, if you have been asked to describe in flow roll, then you can just add in this little bit at the end if you want to, just to sort of, so you can show how it relates to uh, flat back and the effect of moving forwards in flight. As always, if you have any 
uh, questions, points, queries or corrections, please put them in the points below and I'll, I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Thanks.